welcome back. This <laughs> is Joy 99.7 on radio, and this is your Joy News channel on television. And um, thanks for staying with us. Now, we will look uh, quickly at matters arising as far as um, our increased debt, debt stock is concerned, but we have very limited time, so we'll focus on the $2 billion uh, euro bond and then uh, maybe use that to try and see if we can answer the questions why the World Bank is worried and cautioning of a high risk of debt distress if the debt levels are not managed. And as you know now, the public debt stock has hit a whopping 145 billion CDs. Now, don't flip your dial because the Joy Sports team will bring you a double dose of thrill this afternoon. In, part in partnership with the BBC, we will bring you full commentary of the FA Cup final between Chelsea and Manchester United. Gary Al Smith and the rest of the team will take over from 2.30 p.m. Before that, Nathaniel Atto will bring you the Joy Sports link where the panel will look at ways in which Premier League clubs and the FA can give the xylophone cash good mileage for their headline sponsorship for the Ghana Premier League. And talking about football reminds me of number 12 coming up soon. And uh, Anas appears to be scaring some people out of their homes, we are told. <laughs> but um, um, I, ha I haven't seen it. But um, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it, but <laughs> but it's 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 terrible. I have my uh, doubts. It's terrible. It's interesting. It's, it's interesting. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, let, let's let's look at this now. Let's look at this now. Um, what 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 do you have to say, Doc, about the two billion that is coming? We have. Um, one for for a 10 year and a 30 years and we're getting a lot of praise because you know the interest rate at which they were acquired are good but i'm asking the question you take a debt and you're happy what is that i say i share the same statement <coughs> with you when you take a debt don't be happy because hmm. whatever be the case you pay except that it gives you a little briefing space hmm. my only concern if i read i just read the imf report that if they borrowed Part to be used in refinancing. If it's about refinancing, then it won't add up to the debt. Okay. But <coughs> if they're going to use part, then the debt would have to go up. Mm. That is my only concern. Because as the World Bank is saying that we are hitting about 68.9% of the GDP, then this one will add up to. Okay, just hold on. Let's see if Kojo can help us yeah. there. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, actually, <laughs> there is uh, an insert. He has spoken and we're supposed to play that, but because he's here, let me just pin him down <laughs> okay. on it. <coughs> what, what Doc is talking about, yeah. what, what's, what's, the, what's the goal? The goal of? Yes, he's saying that if it is going to be used for oh, re, to okay. refinance, okay. then it will not increase the debt. So we have... Uh, but if part of it will, will not be, then obviously... We have reached um, $2 billion on the global capital market. $1 billion of it is going for liability management operations. It's going to refinance the debt and do other um, LMOs. And then the other $1 billion is um, part of the new debt stock. So, no, in fact, part of the new debt stock is 750. It is a 1.250 yeah. yeah. that is going yeah. to uh, uh, finance, yeah, right. uh, uh, refinance the debt and do other liability management operations. But it's also important to look at it in a certain context. And I'll give you two contexts. One is, what is the um, net financing that we add to our debt stock on a year-by-year -year basis? And is it going up or is it coming down? That's okay. why. So you do that but because I needed it to clear up okay. so that uh, Doc can continue. Okay, thank you. Um, adding it up, for me, is something that we have to be very careful. Because we just spoke about the banking sector. We cannot do bailouts for them because we already hit 68.9. 69.8. 69 uh, the 60, final figures are now 69.2. 69.2, yeah. which is near distress. Yeah. So that is my only worry. But And also, again, if I look at the IMF, then they look at infrastructure, 
budget financing, social objective. Which sector, which of these three areas are you going to pull? Because if you put it on leap and people to enjoy, then it means that we're only chopping future money today. But if it's going to be serious capital projects, say a highway to Kamale, dual carriage or your pillar that you your pay bridge. Then for me, I know we have a capital project which will pay. This is the outline of projects that um, the Euro bond is being used for. Infrastructure. Only infrastructure, not yes. for consumption. No, it's for infrastructure. Mm. That's the outline there. It was tabled in Parliament. This was approved. This is what we want on the roadshow for. And this so uh, we should have received this one to make out. It's available mm. already. No, no, it's no, publicly no. available. Mm. So if it's not going to be in consumption, fine. But the other thing that I want to do is that we put in strategy, although we are rescheduling to 15, 30 years. Like our quotes, Honorable uh, Adongo, has anybody sit, sat down to look at the MPVs and the DCF of the debt? We need to, like he said in that discussion, we need to look at these MPVs because, you see, money today needs to be projected in 30 years. So if we are not going to do anything that will bring generation of money, we won't be able to pay. And then we will continue to risk handling it or borrowing to finance. Mm. And that could be a dangerous system. Uh -huh. We can become like the Americans. Okay. Uh, Isaac, what, what is it that he's saying you said that is important to take note of? Well, I think uh, generally we should be getting worried about our debt profile. Mm. Uh, the 145 billion uh, is, I think, as of February. Mm. And so what has been borrowed in March, April, and even into May is not already factored in. And what has been repaid as well? The, 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 world, that's, the world that's, bank, that's, that's the world bank yeah. and the IMF uh, analyze our debt sustainability, uh, uh, including the energy bond. They add mm. the energy bond mm. in the debt sustainability analysis of Ghana. And that is the, why, the reason they get something close to 71% and they get worried. But government of Ghana removes yeah. the energy bond. Yeah. Yeah. And so there is a disconnect in terms of the numbers between IMF and the World Bank. But you see, the issue as to whether this will impact public debt or it will not impact public debt, we have an experience we need to look at. You recall that you and I were in this place when we discussed 2.25 billion bond. We were told that that was for refinancing of our maturing debt obligation. Just like the same thing about liability management. It's the same as liability management. Mm. And that amount of money at the time, uh, at the exchange rate at the time, was about 9.7 billion. And we're expecting that 9.7 billion will not impact the public debt because all of it was going to be used to refinance our public debt. In the end, only 4.2 billion of that money was used to refinance public debt. 5.5 billion of that ended up in our public debt. <coughs> So uh, uh, this one, this liability management, watch it very carefully. And the question is, where is the money going? If the money is entirely, and I think I raised that here, if the money is entirely for liability management, put the money in the sinking fund. That's where it's going. Then everybody knows that it is illegal to use that money for anything else. But if you take the money and you put it into the reserve fund account where there's discretion, and you come and tell me it's for liability management. Until the end of the year, we are unable to tell whether it's for liability management or not. And so the tendency for this to impact public debt beyond what we have been ag what has been agreed as money going into the uh, uh, the budget would hit the public debt. How much of the liability management are we likely to see hit the public debt on the basis of the previous experience? But I also make the point that in addressing all of this, we need to look at our revenue performance for the first quarter of the year. So that is becoming very worrying. If you compare the same period in 2007 to the same period this time, then 2007. now. Yeah, in 2017, sorry. It's good you mentioned that. 2017. Yeah. And now, in 2017, first quarter, total revenue and grants, we're doing 1.6 in January, 2.9 in uh, February, and 4.4 in, in, in March. The same period now, we are doing 1.3 instead of 1.6. We are doing 2.6 instead of 2.9. We are doing 3.4 instead of 4.4. Clearly, the revenue numbers are getting worried. 
And you see, if you put this in the context of the fact that in 2017, we said that the economy that had been inherited was so terrible, but it could support improved revenue generation. Now that it has improved, the revenue generation is a problem. Mm. So there is a very serious problem. And if this trend continues, what it means is that we are already off target in terms of our revenue projection and the possible deficit that we may be getting. So that is something that I believe we need to look at. And it is even worrying because where the problem is coming from is domestic revenue generation that is declining. Whilst we did 1.5 domestic revenue in 2007, around the same time January, we are doing only 1.3. 200 million is gone. We did 2.8, we have done 2.6. We did 4.2, we have done 3.9. So there's something to do with domestic revenue generation. I'm pointing this out to demonstrate that we need to scale up the tax measures that we have put in place <coughs> in order to make sure that these uh, 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 slippages do not lead to additional increase in deficit, which will further impact the, 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 the public debt. But there's a comment that I think I have to take opportunity today to raise. Since this bond issue came, I have not commented on it. Mm. But the comparison of... You haven't done a press conference. The <laughs> comparison of 2018 interest rates to an interest rate in a previous year is never done in the preparation towards issuance of a bond. In the issuance of a bond, you are looking at current conditions, you are looking at benchmark instruments on the market, you are looking at the general appetite of the market, and you are projecting into the future. And on that basis, what was the yield to maturity of Ghana's existing bonds on the market? And the yield to maturity of Ghana's existing bonds on the market was 6%. What it means is that we paid 1.2 uh, more for the 10-year bond and paid 2.6% more for the 30-year the bond. That is one point. The second point is that for a bond of 9.6... Oh, you didn't compare it to the no, previous I'm, one. No, no, I'm comparing. Do the same no, 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 no. Do the same Oh, you can do that. No, no, you do can it. do that. Because do you get issued it, so you can do it. Have Let you me finish. Have you realized? Let me if finish. In this instance, let me finish. Go there and ask yourself, oh. what's the risk premium? You let me finish my point. Two. <laughs> for a bond of 9.6... <laughs> for a bond of 9.6 to be trading at a yield to maturity of 6%, means that that, point, that bond is trading at a premium. So for you to be issuing the bond at a discount already means that you are giving close to 3% away to an investor. Okay. And if you were to factor that discount, and you were to factor the cost to uh, the yield to maturity that is already on the market, you will find that this bond is overpriced. Because the one holding the same per 6%, his biggest challenge is that when he finally gives out the bond, he has a reinvestment risk. Yeah. Can he get a similar instrument? Now you have assured him of 10 years, you have assured him of 30 years, and you are willing to even pay more for that, mm -hmm. for addressing his risk. And yet, we are comparing a bond issuance of an, this is a bad deal in terms of the current conditions and the current circumstances. Example. And not, and not. Okay. This is an overpriced bond. <laughs> could, could you a do, very do overpriced could you, bond. Could but we are doing this, a very do simple this. analysis of yeah. it was Thank issued 9% in another Thank year, you. and this time, it, no, 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 nobody Thank does that could kind of analysis. Hold it? I take this quick break. When we come, you get to listen to Kojo. He has serious reservations about, particularly the what claim say, that this is bad. It's, it's, right it's, right it's overpriced. That's what you are doing now. An Elephants one. and antelopes. Mm. Very overpriced. That's what you are doing now. <laughs> right, you're welcome back. And my outfit, as always, is by Latida. And uh, Kokubako says, all the time is for you. In fact, you know what? He begged, he begged the production not to be brought on this, this team today. Oh, no. Because Bobby. it was full of finance. The production didn't allow him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's hear you. You have always given us inspiration to stay with us. <laughs> okay, so let's hear you. Very yeah. quickly. Um, yes, the nominal revenue numbers for quarter one are less than what we recorded same time last year. But I also remember the argument same time last year. Revenue is not performing. The deficit is going to be bigger than budgeted. Indeed, if your listeners will recall my uh, budget day debate with uh, Madame Monacote, she categorized revenue is not performing. The deficit will be larger. You guys can't meet those targets. That's exactly what my brother is saying here. Yeah. And it is not for nothing that the national accounts are not closed at the end of April or May. You have a horizon up to the end of the year to make up whatever gaps. Revenue is cyclical. So we are expecting that, looking at the methods that we are rolling out, 
we will meet the revenue and deficit targets. That's my first point. The second argument is that there's no disconnect between the IMF data and the GOG data. The IMF data agrees with that, that debt to GDP ratio revised is now 69.2. And then they make a footnote that, however, if you include ESLA, ESLA yeah. then it goes into this category. They agree with that. Okay. But then, because we have had this debate with them as to whether or not ESLA is a new public debt. And we have explained that ESLA is not a new public debt. So what they do is that in their data set, they say 69.2 years. But when you include ESLA, you can look at it at the same. But this is the point they make. 70% is the threshold of debt distress. But where were we? And sometimes I get a bit worried with my colleagues in the media. And I think I've got to say it here clearly. It appears that our colleagues in the media are forgetting some numbers. We did not get to 69.2 this morning. We were at 73.1. That's when we hit debt distress. As at December 2016. You remember President Akufo State of Nature Address? He said um, uh, the debt stock is 122 billion. And in the sustainability terms, it's 73 point. In fact, at that time, it was a debate. 4. Yes. In fact, at that time, it was a debate between 73.4 and 73 point. Yes. Right, right. We have come down from 73.4, or if you use the other term, 73.1, down to 69.2. Our debt sustainability is improving. You know why? Because every little borrowing, every little resource that we get, we are investing efficiently in the real sector of the economy. And I'll demonstrate it to you. You know, we used to talk a lot about the fact that if money was being wasted, corruption was high, you will have a bloated expenditure budget, but you won't see growth. When you send your child to school, there's only one thing you are looking for, the terminal report, to see did he pass maths and science. When you run an economy, at the end of the year, what we use is your numbers. So if you borrow and you claim you didn't use it for consumption, we should be seeing your GDP going up. If you borrowed and you claimed you invested it, why was your GDP moving from about 14% in 2011 to 3.6. When we borrowed, and I'm going to show you, and invested in the real sector, GDP has gone up to 8.5. This year, we are targeting about 6.8. The numbers I'm beginning to see are predicting us about 7, 7 plus. We are not in a history to predict further. And when the growth numbers started coming, you know what you said? Oh, don't mind them. It's oil. The final GDP figures from the Ghana Statistical Service are out. The Ghana Statistical Service measures 20 segments of our economy. In 11 of those segments, we are growing at higher rates than we grew last year. And I can take you through them. Even in financial services. Well, if you, if well, you, if you, 2016 compared to 2017, ah, okay? okay? 2016, it was zero, it was negative 0 0.6. For what? To, uh, 2017, it's gone for to what? the positive financial 0 0.9. For what? He has seen it's the last five minutes, so he's <laughs> going to start this exercise. No, Don't worry. <laughs> Education has moved from 8.3 to 9.9. Real estate has moved from 3.8 to 5.2. The tourism industry, hotels, restaurants, move from negative, uh, um, move from 0 0.9 to 1.1. Construction, and sometimes they said, you are not spending on CAPEX. You forget that when you send money to district assemblies and to the earmark funds, they also do CAPEX there. And so you begin to see construction. When they claimed they were doing big CAPEX, complex, uh, construction was 2.9. We are now doing 4.6. Water and sewage has gone up. There, there's data to support that, our little borrowing has gone into the real sector. And that's why we are growing. Now, let me take you to the big picture. You always want to look at the net. And never mind, I don't know why it says, gross borrowing, gross borrowing. When we are borrowing, we are also paying back. This refinancing we are talking about, you may, you may swap debts. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you take a cheaper debt, you pay a more expensive debt. So it's not the gross, it's the net. And here's the point. Listen, in 2016, they did net financing of the budget, nominal terms, about 13 billion. We have said, I want to gradually reduce it. Of course, if you reduce it in one day, you literally collapse the economy. So you've got to go down. In 2017, we went down to 11.9. This year, and if your cameras can zoom in, this is the 2018 budget. Mm. This year, we are targeting financing of 10 billion. We're going down further. You know, we keep saying that we are reducing the rate of debt accumulation. And by so doing and investing in more good uh, real sectors, GDP will go up and debt to GDP ratio will come down. And as we are reducing the rate of debt accumulation, they will say, oh, they are boring, they are boring. But look at it. It's come from 12 to 11 to 10. Look at this figure. 2019, we expect to go down to 9. 2020, it's still in the 9 zone, but it's still lower than the previous 9. Mm. Because we want, this is what the president means when he says Ghana beyond 8. That we boost revenue. So my last point of revenue. For the first time in our economic history, and I've challenged anybody to educate me. 
we projected to grow revenue by 33%, 33.5% last year. We are told that we didn't miss it by even 5%. Yes, we didn't meet the full target. No, that's not true. But, uh, well, if you have other figures, put it there. I won't argue with you. you. Don't worry. You to oh, bring the other figures. You I won't argue with you. Listen, let, do that, do that let me finish. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, please. Two, 30 seconds, please. Yes. yes. Quick, quick. They came with a revised budget, bringing the figure to 22%. Okay. And it is the 22% they didn't miss by that figure. So, no. Bojo, you no. are still not, How can no. you be dealing with a revised Don't budget? Don't worry. Don't you worry. are dealing with a revised Don't budget. And now you are still way back. If you have data, bring it. It is in a revised budget. I have one minute to finish. I'm saying that this year, this year, you are this year we are targeting to grow revenue by 26%. So we have horizon. So how come you are not coming to 26%? We will meet it. <laughs> OK. Thank can you. I, Thank can you I respond much. to a few things? We, we ran out of time. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. To do a lot of... I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. We'll be watching and listening to news files. Holding some documents. Coming to you from multi-TV, Joy News channel, and also on Joy 99.7 FM, where dozen affiliate stations across the country, on DSTV, and also streaming live on the internet. My guests have been Abdul Malik Pekuba, co-editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Uh, Dr. Richmond Etiahine is banking consultant and CEO Universal Capital Management. Kojo Opong Kruma is MP of Fuasi Ayerebi and Minister, uh, Deputy Minister for Information. Of course, Isaac Adongo is MP Borga Central and member, Finance Committee no, 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 of Parliament. No, 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 I'm Samson Ladia Yenini. My outfit, as always, is by Latida. Be invoked. Have a good afternoon.